Hello, my name is Merle Rutledge. I am the 2021 candidate for governor of Virginia running for the Republican nomination. I'd like to first start this off by saying God is good all the time. Once again, I repeat that. God is good all the time. A couple of minutes ago, I had a very important phone call. And it was from a great lady in Richmond, Newport News. I'm not going to say her name just yet, but you'll find out about her along the way. But God puts it in certain people to talk to and give you a message that you cannot ignore. You must embrace and accept what God is trying to tell you. And they send different people to do it in their own charismatic way. See, I understand that a lot of people, whether Democrat or Republican or Independent, is sick of the race issues that um, infect all sides. The fact of the matter is we have to start looking at each other as human beings. Human beings that are flawed, not perfect. Human beings that love their family, love their religious views, or love whoever that they decide to choose to love. Regardless of how you feel about it, from a religious standpoint or from a personal standpoint or view. Race is a problem throughout America. So is so many other factors in America, whether it is homelessness, whether it's people who are looking for work, or those who are unsure and uncertain of what the future may bring. Very little solace comes from the fact of what they look like and who they are, but what impacts them throughout life. Me, I'm not a politician. I'll tell you that one left and right. But I'm very compassionate and I do care about people. A lot of times when I got involved in a lot of matters, whether it was fighting for sexual assault victims, whether it was making sure murderers went to jail, or helping people who was facing eviction and hardships, even to those who had people on drugs or lost a loved one to the streets. The fact is, we all have different lives and different perils that we go through. One thing is certain, yes, death is here, but we can make sure while we are on this planet that we show love, compassion, care for each other as human beings and part of the human race. We all bleed through similar veins, and when you hurt, it hurts all of us. We should care about that. Sometimes we demonize people that we don't know and we haven't sat down with them for five minutes. Haven't had a coffee or a beer or a bite to eat just to discuss our differences as well as finding out where we have common ground. I don't look at people when I go into a room and say, Hey, it's a bunch of white people, it's a bunch of black people. I look at everybody as human beings no better than me, and I'm and definitely no better than them. I come with flaws too. <laughs> and I come with a faith that God gave me a second chance. Why can't I give up? I think people are tired of elections being bought off and people ignoring exactly what's going on here in America that the media doesn't cover. When I drive down the street and see somebody homeless that used to have a roof over their head, or those sitting in cars with their family and asking for a bite to eat or some change, as their life has changed throughout this pandemic, and so many who have lost loved ones who will hope to hold their hand in the hospital before they passed away. And I see the nurses and the doctors who have to continue to see death every single day. And those police officers that are out there trying to do their job, 
and they are caught up in the propaganda of politicians. We all are. Everybody who I just mentioned are caught up in it. Not because of their race, but because of who they are and the decisions that they made in their career or in their pathway. They accept it valiantly. And they are heroic among words. We do what we do for our families to continue a generation that is left behind to have a better footprint in this world than we had. Everything in our past wasn't perfect. No past is. We all had demons and we all had black sheep in our family. Sometimes you was that black sheep, but God had grace on you. I don't talk right now from being a Democrat or a Republican. I talk from the heart and the soul every time. I'm very passionate, but I'm very angry like so many of you that feel like you've been ignored. You're scraping for pennies and trying to have just enough to have something to eat. You're trying to put food on your family's table. And you're looking for a government that you didn't have to depend on, but now you do. It's not just about socialism. It's about our right to exist and be who we are. And to understand that we must care for each other. We have to get past the hate and start showing love. See, sometimes it's not about being a politician, sometimes you have to just do the right thing, even though controversy may be in the midst. I was taught that a long time ago. Even though I quote Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream, as well as his statements, I believe in it. Whether you white, black, blue, yellow, doesn't matter. When you hear his voice and you hear his words, it impacts you. It impacts you to go across the street and ask somebody, how are they doing? Are they doing okay? How's their family? You know, how's their friends? We have lost so much during this time period. Not race, but our ability to associate with one another and have the conversations that have long been ignored. There may have been a riot on the streets, but it's been a riot all along. And it has been basically <laughs> us against us. And the politicians have played their part and fanned the flames. I'm here to bring everybody together, but I don't ignore the fact that evil still lurks. And sometimes we have to be bold enough to confront exactly the issues that people ignore. And I stand by the people, not by the politicians. I wish they understood what people really go through. Or they wouldn't be the cowards that they are today. How we was brought up, for those in the older generations, you all understand. We was brought up not to quit. We was brought up to look after each other and make sure that our families was taken care of. Our mothers and fathers raised us to the point if something happened to them that we would be able to step in their place and make sure we lived on the legacy with taking care of each other. They made sure for us to know that's what was the expectation. Because tomorrow ain't promised, people. It's not for any one of you. Whether you're full of hate or you are full of love. It's not promised, people. And God didn't decide on whether he was going to take out somebody black or somebody white. Today could be the last day for so many, and it is. When we see domestic violence where people are killed within a moment, a day before their birthday. When we see kids go to school and then a gunman or somebody full of evil decides to attack people who are just innocent because they have something going on. 
See, mental health is an issue, and it's far, far a problem that these politicians ignore because guess what? They want you to be mentally ill. They want us to hate each other. They don't want us to trust each other. In the chaos, there is pattern. And the pattern is they only care about them and lining their pockets. See, people ain't running for office like they used to be. Full of hope, full of ambition, full of love, one thing hear everybody's voice and be a fighter for the people that they talked about where others failed. That's why they ran for office. They got tired of seeing the BS. But it doesn't do no good if you become part of it. That swamp is there for a reason because sometimes once people get into office they have money being thrown at them. They have people promising them gifts, bribing, doing everything that they claimed that they wasn't going to do. They was going to be that change that became the same thing. That's why we do need term limits. Because we need people that represent what America is going through, what the genius is really going through, the farmers small businesses where people worked hard and it's taken away and it's like nobody cares I see mom and pop shops that used to be there used to have a great breakfast or a great dinner or a place where I used to go to fix my TV or for kids to go to a bike store and there will always be this great boss or this great manager there that sometimes would do most of the work for free because they love the community and they love seeing people come in each day having those conversations and those interactions trying to make each other feel better and uplifted because we don't know what everybody's going through we don't and we need to sometimes take a moment we do to ask somebody how are they doing and see how we can help. Don't ask them whether they're a Democrat or a Republican or who their affiliation is. See, it's our character that changes people's minds and opens their ears and opens their eyes to see. Because I do it because I love to see people know that they have a voice and somebody has heard them out and is committed to action, committed to taking the blitz and the hard hits. Because that's what those people been taking all their life. Not because they're just black, not because they're just white, just because they felt like they couldn't afford to be a part of the equation of change. See, we put too much attention to money. That's why I don't put that much into fundraising. Because when I was running around kicking ass and doing what I do for this country and representing my community, I did it to see people smile. I did it to see people wake up and understand that if I can do it, there's no excuse for you not doing it. And share that gift of action so that others know that they can be a part of it too. They don't need to be silent. They don't need to be in the closets anymore. They can come out. That's what these politicians are forgetting all about. Massive incarceration does it throw out our problems. We're taking on so much here in America throughout all our lifetimes. So did our ancestors. They didn't care about races. They saw what was going on right now. They like, we fought, died, bled, regardless of who they are. Whether from the Civil War to now. We did this for you to have a better life. We did this for your kids to have a better life. I don't want... 
a black child getting killed by somebody white because of the color of their skin. I don't want somebody black shooting somebody white because of the color of their skin. They wanted you to work together and get past the ills of the past and say, this is what I want for not only you, but I want that for your future too. Because we lost so much and we paid a huge price. We paying that price now. A lot of us don't realize we are in slavery right now. And it's not black people locked up in chains. It's not white people locked up in chains. It's, it's the American people. And the politicians are the slave masters right now. See, <coughs> the teachers, those who lost their jobs recently, those mothers and fathers right now that is looking for an answer because they're scared. A lot of people are scared right now. It's not being talked about. It hurts. If you are a politician, you don't feel that because you used to not having emotion. You used to being desensitized in your bullshit. But people on the ground, those who work in charities and food banks, the churches, even the men and women that priests run the pulpit, I see them lose faith too. Because the toll that has been taken on so many is immeasurable because we don't understand what each other is going through, but we can understand the outcome because we see it all the time. And it wears on us too. In order for us to reach out to each other on both sides, we got to take on what each other is going through. We can't sit back and ignore the fact of what's going on in the ghetto. And we can't sit back and ignore what is going on in our U.S. Capitol either. We need to understand what's going on and start asking, are you there for the American people or are you there for yourself? Because even a politician does insider trading and makes a couple of million dollars during a pandemic. But how much would they give back to the American people that really need it? People want to earn their way. Both sides. Nobody really wants handouts. But they're being forced right now. You're not going to take a dollar so you starve. Nobody should be looking down on each other. We can't. When I was in Richmond, I looked at a stadium. I saw homeless people all over that stadium. Only place to sit, and they was promised if they left a certain area that they'll get help and assistance. A lot of these homeless people were people who were put out on the street after losing their job and landlords wasn't giving them a break. They ran out of time. A lot of us is running out of time. Some people are running out of time for their loved ones who are on drugs and they're overdosing. Some within this conversation will no longer be here on this planet. This is the side effects of this pandemic. And this is what a crisis in leadership looks like. So when I see politicians rolled out, I got all these endorsements and all this other crap, who gives a damn? Seriously, who gives a damn? I got people I got people starving right now. I got people getting kicked out of their homes, losing their cars, families getting split up because one household can only take a couple and the other household can only take a couple. 
And people just basically saying, I want to help, but I can't afford to because I'm about to be you if I do. I don't want this to be the new norm. And it only seems like it's getting worse. Forget the lies that the media tells you. This is the real truth that they don't tell you. So when I see these politicians talking about, I'm going to do this and do that, the same spin, the same BS, that pisses me off. That's why I run the way I run. I bring up everything. Because nobody else is bringing up a damn thing that matters to the American people. Because those people homeless out on the streets, those who are losing their homes, those who are losing everything that they worked hard for in their life savings. Some of their life savings is going towards a family member that they have to take in because we failed them as leaders. We made the promise for the opportunity in the American dream and we took it away from them. I'm here to give it right back. And I'm going to do it with love, care, and with conviction. Because I'm part of the problem too. If I don't stand up and speak against it. And speak against them. See, it ain't about me being Democrat, Republican, or Independent. It's about me caring about human beings for who they are and the content of their character and recognizing you are my brother and you are my sister and I care about you. God didn't let me down and I won't let you down if you give me the opportunity. I don't care how many people interview for a job or interview to say that they are ready to be governor. What are you doing now? What are you doing now to make people's lives better? What are you doing to uplift them in a time where they need the leadership? You're failing them because you're so busy on a goal of a title instead of care for the people in which that title holds you to be accountable. My heart hurts today because everything I've mentioned throughout this live right now that's the real America and I want to see people fight back get lifted up if you on drugs I want you back in treatment because God didn't give up on you yet if you're homeless and you going through struggles right now God did not give up on you yet because I'm not giving up on you whether you are rich or poor or middle class or you embarrassed but because your situation doesn't meet the up D levels that it used to be. God ain't through with you yet. But you got to be humble. And understand that when times like this happen, just like in the Bible, for so many and so many now into our ancestors, we have managed to overcome because we put God's will first. And we walk by faith, and we continue to see the promised land. But if you put your money as your reason to be left alone or not participate in solving these problems, see, that gift of gold got a lot of people in trouble. It was a carpenter with a copper cup. Remember that. And I'm going to rather have that copper cup and win this race and bring back people who have lost all faith and let them know I haven't forgotten about you. Just don't forget about me either. And keep praying for me. And I'm going to keep praying for you and keep fighting for you. If you looking at a name and some advertisement to get you out of this mess that's the problem and that's gonna always be your problem because us right now white black blue yellow that's going through what we are going through see we want action we want promises kept 
And we want somebody who ain't scared to ruffle feathers and bring up issues like this because this is what needs to be addressed. It's those who are losing during this time period and losing everything and they're screaming out. Sometimes the riot is the voice of the unheard. Who said that? And that's exactly what's going on. So if I'm going to riot, I'm going to riot for God. I'm going to riot to bring truth and bring this story out. But I'm not here just to tell a story. I'm here to show everybody that we will come back. I'm going to continue to put God first. And just know God ain't through with us yet. But we got to be willing to fight. We got to be willing to fight for each other. This is how we change up our image. Because if we don't, we're going to lose everything. And it may not be COVID to do it. So to everybody, you know, I had to, this is a real talk, you know, no games about it. Some people send you messages and you have to hear it loud and clearly. And I wish everybody a great day. If anybody needs to talk, you feel suicidal. Um, you feel like you may do something that you may regret. I'm making my time even during this campaign. I will speak to you. I will call you. I will reach out and I will make time for you. I care about you and what you are going through. And hopefully, you, if you have a moment, because it took a moment for me to change my life. And I hope I can do the same for others. So, have a great day. I'm going to keep that promise. And when you feel like everything has failed you, just know I'm here too, just like so many brothers and sisters are here too, regardless of what they look like or what they are in their personal life. The fact is you can tell where people care and where they don't. And I just want people to know it's going to be a better tomorrow. And I'm going to fight for that. I haven't given up. You know, God brought me too far to leave leave us by and thank you thank you for your time I'm Merle Rutledge and I am the 2021 candidate for governor of Virginia that will be bringing unity message of love and the real truth and I hope to make sure I make everyone in Virginia proud don't expect me to be perfect don't do that one but I'm going to be real. Have a great day. God bless you, and God bless America.